Okay, ready to uh, let's make some dubbing here. Um, I like to make my own dubbing personally. You know, they, we have a lot of packages of dubbing on the wall in a fly fishing store. And nothing's bad about any of that dubbing there if you if you use it. However, I'm a, just a little bit um, more selective than that for myself personally. Uh, I like dubbing that looks really really cool. And we're going to see some how to make some dubbing that looks really, really cool. And in order to use it, uh, in order to make it here, we need uh, we need dubbing to make dubbing. And so, um, uh, first of all, I want to show you my suggestions here as far as something that uh, some things that you might need to make dubbing. First, of course, you need a coffee grinder. This coffee grinder, I would try to um, uh, keep it as shallow as possible. This is just a little over an inch here, and this is a very small dome. The smaller the dome, the smaller, the shallower the um, grinder, the easier your dubbing is going to be to, to uh, quickly blend up and, and blend real nicely. So make sure you don't have one of those tall uh, uh, coffee blenders. Now what we need is um, uh, for base, let's start with the base material. Base material is sort of like paint. When you start with um, making some real unique colored paint, you usually start with a base which is usually white. However, we don't usually start with white. We start with the closest base color to the actual thing that you have in your head as far as color that you want to imitate. And so uh, some packages of um, oh, Antron, uh, Hairline Dubbin, uh, SLF, which is um, a cool synthetic uh, dubbing. These are all things you find on your shelf in your fly fishing store and here in the, the Warner Bugger Fly Company. And uh, uh, we want some base stuff. We'll have a couple browns. We'll have a, a dark and a light brown. And I've got a gray for like your calabatus and making atoms, stuff like that. Uh, then we have uh, a couple of olives. One just a little bit, li um, little bit uh, lighter than the other. A couple of olives. And maybe throw in a yellow and a burnt orange. Uh, those could be kind of handy too, and you can use the yellow sometimes to, to like say uh, say you want to lighten this up considerably. Really lightens up nice with the yellow. However, sometimes yeah, lightening up with yellow isn't what you want because um, so what you do is you take a white, maybe and lighten up that brown a little bit into a tan or this lighter brown into a tan, um, but also maybe some black. Uh, to darken up something if you have to darken it up. So if you have white and black and these base colors of a couple couple different uh, browns, a couple different olives, and then a burnt orange and a yellow, that's going to cover almost all your bases there, and a gray. So now we have the base colors out of the way. Um, most of that, most of the base colors I use are synthetic like Antron. Your Antrons are, are good, but uh, and, and any kind of you know blend that's that's real solid in color will work as a as a base. Now we want to take put some a little bit of pizzazz into our uh, dubbing, and so here I've selected four different types of ice dubbing. Uh, this ice dubbing would be used in small amounts, in, and you'll see exactly how that works here in a minute. It's going to be used in real small amounts in your dubbing, and it's really really going to look cool. Um, here we have an olive for our olive-based dubbings, which are probably the most used color of dubbings. Then we have uh, uh, a dark brown and a light brown. Uh, this one's called pheasant tail, which is a dark brown, of course, as you can see. And this is a lighter brown. This just has enough lighter stuff brown in it, too, that you can use it with your oranges, say, like an October caddis. You know, you take this base color here, and you can see that you can get your October caddis colors real easy out of this lighter brown. So this is would act as your light brown and your orange, and then we have your dark brown for all your your real brown brown stuff, and then the olive for all the olive based stuff. And you can use this in a yellow too, just briefly in a yellow, a little tiny bit in there, make, make it will come out too. And then of course we need something for our gray, and I selected a ice dubbing. UV calabatus. I've tried this in this in the, in the calabatus stuff, and this stuff looks really cool in a calabatus dubbing. And so this was my kind of my favorite uh, of all the calabatus colors that I've been I've been making here uh, recently, and so that's why I selected that one. So those are all your um, your dubbings that you need. Uh, you probably have a lot of these dubbings already. If you do, um, your investment is very small there. 
Uh, the last thing you're going to need is um, some um, hair's masks or bunny faces. They're, uh, uh, these are really cool and I'll show you why here in a minute, but I would select here as for colors. We have an olive and a yellow and of course the two together would make, right, uh, it would make a, a light colored olive. Um, or you could dark, you a darker a, a yellow just by adding a little bit of this. So you can see how you can play with colors there a little bit. But yeah, uh, an olive and a yellow and then a brown, a good solid brown, an orange, and a natural. Now these things cost $3.50. Uh, you're likely to get a couple hundred flies off each one of these. They're not very much money. They're real cheap and uh, obviously dyed. And so those are real cheap. And that dubbing's real cheap. Uh, in fact, this whole pile that I showed you here, all these colors of uh, hair's mask, all these colors here of uh, uh, dubbing that we have, including the ice dubbing, um, yeah, you put that all together and you probably come out in the neighborhood of about 40 bucks worth of stuff. And with this, uh, with the blender, you might even, grinder, you might even come out for, say, 50 bucks. It's not very much uh, money to invest in, uh, in all your dubbing materials. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about each of those things that, I, that I've been telling you about. And I don't have to show you a whole lot about the, about the um, uh, base color that I use. Again, I use a nice Antron base color. Uh, uh, here's a nice uh, antrum. This is the one, in fact, we'll, we'll make up some dubbing here in a minute, and this is the one I'll select for that. So I'm going to set it aside. Again, you just want it to be a good, solid, definite color, sort of like you were using it for a, bait, uh, a base for paint or something like that as your base color. And then we have some ice dubbing. I get them in these. Uh, dispensers here it's a little easier but I, you see all these different colors I've got two of them uh, all these different colors that we can use to put a little pizzazz in there not much we don't want to overdo it but uh, an interesting little sparkle we can get in there and then the, the real good stuff now this is uh, this is your let's see let's look at this one it looks pretty good this is a light olive one here um, you can see that it's got uh, um, dark and light on it both in other words, you see light olive in places, but you see so when it darkens up a little bit where you have these darker guard hairs. And that's uh, so you can get some different shades out of here just by uh, looking at the different shades that you get here. But also notice how you can get some long, really long uh, soft stuff out here on the cheeks. You know how bunnies look on the cheeks there? That's, that's for that nice soft, long, uh, soft, uh, long. Uh, fibers out there so if you, if, you, if you want some longer softer dubbing that's where you get it if not you have all your big stuff sort of on the edges I'll pull the cheeks around like this about like that and you can see how you have all this nice long stuff here that isn't quite as long and soft it's starting to stiffen up just a little bit but it never gets too stiff uh, so you have all this medium stuff right in here and then when you get into the middle of the forehead you have all, a bunch of really nice medium sized stuff here that has a, has a lot of guard hairs in it. The guard hairs are the ones that have the, the brown tips on the end and they come to a real fine um, to a fine point at the end. Those are called guard hairs and that's kind of cool to have guard hairs in your uh, dubbing so they kind of stick out of the fly here and there and give the fly uh, life when it's kind of moving through the water. It, it looks real. Um, it gives it kind of that moving life breathing type effect to it. And that's what we want is uh, we want our dubbing to be real buggy. And I'm still a firm believer that buggier uh, flies get more attention from fish. And they look even buggier than the real bug. And if you can look buggier than the real bug, I think you're going to find that you catch more fish. And I just, I've always thought that and I still do. Um, now when you get up around the, the upper part of the forehead and the ears, now we get into some short stuff up here and on the back of the ears as well. There's some nice soft short stuff here a little bit more bristly uh, short stuff here and if you were doing size 20 flies you might want to select all your stuff from these upper ears up here. So uh, you can see you can get a variety of colors, a, a variety of textures and a variety of lengths of, of the fibers uh, in every single uh, hair's mask. And myself I've got natural, I've got yellow, 
There are other colors available than the ones I've just showed you there. This is called a this is called a golden yellow. I use that a lot. Um, a, a light olive, dark olive, and uh, here we have a couple shades of brown. I think they go this way: light brown and a dark brown, and then what they call a golden brown, and then a burnt orange. And then an orange that my dog got a hold of, as you can see. He has a thing for orange rabbits. Then I've got uh, your done right there too for your gray stuff, and that pretty much covers all the all the uh, uh, hair's mask. But there are some other things I like to use. Here's some um, squirrel. This uh, this squirrel has some real nice. Um, long guard hairs in it. So if you want longer guard hairs, if they're too long for you, you can cut them short and just keep the guard hair portions of it. Or you can go clear down to the uh, uh, to the skin here and get into the, some of this stuff. And the, some of this stuff has, has brown on the outside and gray on the bottom. So you can either separate the gray by only picking the, uh, snipping off the, the brown stuff or you can get gr um, brown and gray at the same time by getting right down to the skin. And that'd be really true of the next thing I'm going to show you here, which is, which is muskrat. And as you may know, muskrat is the uh, color that you're supposed to use for an atoms. But if you look at a muskrat like this, it doesn't look gray at all. But, it is, but when you do cut it down to the skin, like you'll see here, if you cut it down to the skin and put it in the blender, it comes out gray because everything under that brown is a true gray. You can see that maybe better by looking at that there. You see that stripe of gray across there. A really beautiful gray with nice brown, little brown um, uh, guard hair sticking out of it. So uh, this is again what you'd use on an Adams. Nice gray. One more thing I'd like to talk about here though is the, uh, oh uh, by the way on that squirrel also they have a squirrel mask here too a lot like the hair's mask. And these have a bunch of real fine, beautiful guard hairs in here, and I use these these in a lot. These are the best, some of the best guard hairs you'll find anywhere. It's on a pine squirrel mask, um, so that's pretty cool. But I did want to talk a little bit about um, um, uh, snowshoe rabbit. These are the hind feet of a snowshoe rabbit. Um, this stuff, this is the bottom part of the foot right here. If you can see this here. I'm pushing down a lot. There's a big pad here, and this pad is all hair, and this pad is not only cushy for the for the rabbit. The, it's kind of like having sneakers on, but it insulates them from from both the uh, the cold ice and the snow, and also the wet um, stuff. So it's waterproof. This stuff you can cut a piece of this off and put it in some water, a glass of water, and it'll float for a month. This stuff does not absorb water. It's very flotation um, oriented. Well, uh, you can see how crinkly this stuff is. You imagine how many thousands of times they um, uh, step up, step on that in the course of their lifetime. So it makes it very uh, crinkly and, and unruly. Uh, it's kind of hard to work as a dubbing. Um, it, it, you can work it as a dubbing, but it, you know, it makes everything look kind of crinkly on the on the hook. So. Um, you either have to put up with that or use the edges, and this is what I like to do, the edges, not down on the pad itself, but right at the edge of the pad, right in here and on the other side too. Um, that stuff is, isn't as crinkly because it hasn't been st stepped on as much, and it still has a fair amount of waterproofing to it. And or you can always use the top stuff. The top stuff isn't as waterproof as the bottom, but it sure looks not a lot nicer in dubbing. It has a little bit of... of um, uh, flotation built into it here. So and this comes in a variety of, of um, uh, uh, dyed colors. This is a natural here. Um, and I do use this stuff some in my dry fly stuff. Be a, a really tempting to use it all the time in your dry fly stuff, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. But I do use it some. 